thank you for joining us today as we venture into the living Word of God. It is this truth that holds the spiritual principles that helps us grow in our relationship with God and build up our inner man. Now, here with today's lesson, Dr. Clarence Creighton, Jr. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, come on, give the Lord some praise. Amen. God is good. He's good all the time. You may be seated. I, I have to keep saying this. People are not clapping for me. They're clapping for the word. Amen. I tell you, outstanding people. I mean, the, our media team, you guys, have just did fantastic. Uh, I said that because of this, and then we're going to have um, a, a word. Um, Julie, have a word for us this morning. Praise God. And that, uh, let me just finish this thought, that Caleb, and uh, he took his wife to the hospital like they may be having the baby early. So he's not here, and the team back there, they kicked in, and y'all wouldn't even have known it. They did an excellent job. Give them a hand. Come on, Julie. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Lord would have you know that he sees you in your sad times. He sees you when you're anxious. He sees you when you're worried. Mm -hmm. He sees your broken heart. But he would have you know that he is your banner. And I am there with you and I love you. I want you to hear with your ears the word of God. Stand on the word and know that I love you. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Now, as Donald come, if you all, I don't think Julie was in intercessory prayer, but in intercessory prayer, the word came that God hears. Amen. And what was the other part of that? And sees. He hears and sees. And, and Julie was not in prayer when those words were spoken. And so we have a confirmation out of the mouth of two or three witnesses that every word be established. Yes, sir, my brother. God bless you. Amen. Good morning. There is someone right now that is in a desperate and an impossible situation. And the Lord has heard you. So go ahead right now. If you're online or in this building, raise your hands. Woo. Mm -hmm. My God, raise your hands. He's acknowledging where you're at. But he's letting you know that all you got to do is let go. You let go and I'll do the rest. Amen. You let go. And I'll do the rest. Thus saith the Lord. Amen. God bless you. All right. Now, we've, we've been asked and said, Lord, we want you to move in our service. <laughs> Amen. And somebody said, when, God, when you ask the Lord to do something, he's not slow. He quick. He quick. <laughs> Come on, give the Lord just a couple of praise. Whether you're in here, online, and you know, um, that's something... That, you know, I didn't, I didn't think about until, Don, you came up and you said, whether you're in here and online, sometimes we just think about the people present. But the word just doesn't come for those who are in here. It comes for all of us. Anyone who can hear, be, be it uh, in person or be it uh, social media, no matter how it comes, it comes. Praise God. And we just give God praise and thanks for that. I tell you, I just, this has been a very inspirational service for me. Uh, praise and worship, beautiful song, beautiful singing, amen, way to minister, glory to God. And then uh, Celicia, amen. Wow, my goodness, praise God, is just good. Amen. He hears and he answers. All right. Now, um, uh, um, as I get into this, we're starting a new series. We're going to start a new series today. I'm checking the clock. And uh, for most of you, I, I have uh, 10 minutes. Uh, for the rest of you, I got five minutes. <laughs> so 
So I'm going to do a quick work, okay? All right, God is so good, and it's just, it's really, a, it's really, really a blessing. All right, um, I want you to open your Bible. We're going to begin teaching on our theme for the year, time and season for transformation. Time and season for transformation. And when I begin studying this, I mean, the, if, if I can use this phrase, the Lord blew my mind. <coughs> Stuff started coming in that I never even thought of, you know. And when the Lord gave me uh, this, Holy Spirit gave me the word, uh, it's time and season for transformation for this year. It, it, was, it had to do with, it came out of the, the COVID situation. Because if you didn't transform in the last two years, you are still stuck in the last season. <laughs> you are stuck in that last season. We want to be blessed now, but how can you be blessed now when you're still stuck in the past? So if you haven't done anything in these last two years, amen, you're going to find that uh, the seasons that are coming that you're not prepared for them. So when I began to really get into the study, and then after also our APs, they taught on, on New Year's and our New Year's Eve, our New Year's service. Our system pastors taught on a time and season. They had, each one had a, a fragment of this particular lesson. They taught on that. But I hadn't completed my last lesson. I said, no, I've completed that lesson. Then it worked out perfectly. Now we now go on and really get into this because I think the delay really allowed the time, it allows the revelation, it, it allowed just illumination of, of me, of my mind. And, and, and he just brought stuff to me, and it started just flowing. And, you know, when stuff started just flowing, you can't think, you, you really can't, you, you, you're, you're driving, and you're thinking, you say, Lord, help me to remember that, help me to remember that. You know, and I'm saying, okay, Lord, help me to remember that, help me to remember that. But it's not all for one time. <laughs> okay, I, I don't have to remember all of it today. I just need to get out to you what you need to know. So let's go to, um, oh, what first, first, <laughs> welcome, amen, to the Rise Church, praise God. Let me get that, thank God for another day, privilege, and opportunity to share with you the living word of God. And every time I say that, I think about my mentor, Apostle Price, and matter of fact, last night I, I dreamed about him. I had a dream about him because I was thinking how that my wife and I, for 25 years, well, more than that, more than 25 years, we sat, about 25, about 32 years, we sat under his teaching. When we were first started by the back gate of Camp Pendleton, when we the, started the, was it, Oceanside Faith Temple Community Church of God in Christ. <laughs> I tried writing that 10 times. <laughs> Long name. It, it was just a mission team, just a few of us when we first started. Pastors did not associate with them. I mean, we just got cut off. We got blackballed because people didn't think I heard from God. You know, I was supposed to stay with my pastor. And, and when you really think about it, every church is part of another church. You came out of somebody. You know, so every pastor came from some uh, other, other church or mentor or what have you. And then uh, we, my wife and I, we connected with uh, Dr. Price. And uh, he just welcomed us in, and from, from that point on, we stayed with him, and he mentored us. That was a season. See, I'm, I'm t that was a season. It was a time and season. And had we not listened to him then, we wouldn't be where we are today. It, had we not, I'm talking about our personal lives. Had we not listened to him then, we would not be where we are today. So I'm saying to you, this to you. Today's a season for you. And he that hath an ear, let him hear. And if you hear and do what the word says in this season, because you're going to find the seasons work in pairs. There's a start of a season. Okay. And when that season, that season leads you into a, another season. Okay. And when we read the scripture, you're going to see that it's in twos. Seasons are in twos. There's love. There's a season for hate. There's good. There's evil. When I go through the Ecclesiastes, you're going to see all of this. And the importance is, is that take advantage of the season you're in because in every season, there's a gift. 
In every season, there's a gift. And if you find the gift, that gift will save you in the next season. Okay? And we're going to see this. So we're going to break it down. We're going to take our time. Amen. I'm really excited, amen, for you in this lesson. All right. So let's go to um, Ecclesiastics chapter 3, verse number 1. Now, we're going to read 1 through 8 in time, but I want you to go to Ecclesiastes 3, uh, 1, 3 and 1, and we need to give some definitions of what seasons and, and, and um, what time means and, what, and what's transformation. We, we got to get that from the very beginning, because if you don't get that from the beginning, then the lesson will be strange to you. Okay, and we don't want that to happen. All right. Ecclesiastics 3 and 1 says, there is a time for everything. If you have Bibles, if you do highlighting, you want to highlight time. Because time and season are not the same. There's a time, watch it, there's a time for everything. Then he goes on to say, and, that means in addition, it's not synonymous, and a season for every activity, Se- season for activities. So seasons are for activities. Time is for everything. So there is time for everything and a season for every activity uh, under the heaven. Okay, every activity under the heaven. So when the Holy Spirit placed this, this thought, time and season for transformation in my heart, like I said before, I, man, I didn't know where he wanted me to go. But then I come to find out through the study and listening to him, I said, oh, Lord, this is important. We really need to get this information. Now, for the, for the past two years, you know, we've heard this word uh, pandemic. Now, before we need, what's a pandemic? You know, and then we heard this, we, what was added to our vocabulary is the word COVID-19. It, it got added to our vocabulary. We were introduced to a new lifestyle. COVID changed what we call normal. Right now, we're not in what we call normal. See, it, it's not normal for you to be wearing a mask in church. But you are, okay? You know, it, it's different now that when we greet one another, we don't greet each other the same. When we're singing and praising worship, it's different. You sing it through cloth. Some of you had a hard enough time singing without the cloth. Now you got to sing through the cloth and <laughs> praising God, okay? So, so here we are singing to the Lord through cloth. Who would have ever imagined something like this happened? I'm looking at that. I see your eyes. And, you know, for me, to me, it's a blessing. Because I don't see if you're smiling or frowning. All I see is your eyes. <laughs> so from this advantage, I say, well, praise the Lord, you know. <laughs> Nobody can be mad at me on Sunday morning anymore. <laughs> Glory. And, 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 you know, when people cough, it's not just, okay, now it's, COVID. <laughs> Somebody cough, you want to get away from them. And there's nothing wrong with them. So now we're suspicious of one another. <coughs> Won't he go home? <coughs> you know. And it's just something's in his throat. I was in the store the other day and I coughed and I was so conscious that, oh, let me get away from people because they're going to think I got COVID. <laughs> And that's what you're thinking. That's so, so something has, something has happened. A transformation have taken place in not only our church, but in the church around the world. The church don't do things like they used to do. It's different right now. It, it's different. And, and, and now this is right now is the norm it's not, it would not be abnormal, even though they lift the mask, for somebody else to keep wearing theirs. See, it won't, it won't be abnormal, because now it's a choice. You could choose to put it on. You could choose to take it off. When they, when they lift the mandate, <clears throat> so you don't have to wear a mask anymore. I, I'm still not trusting everybody. 
I love you, but I'm not loving. I know we trust. I don't trust everybody. Okay, so we still have to take care of ourselves. We still have responsibility. So there's a time and season for everything. And seasons bring transformation. That's what seasons do. Not time. Seasons bring transformation. Now, here's what we need to know. Time as it, as, it, as it relates to the scripture, the scripture tells us time reveals it is infinite, endless, immeasurable, unlimited. You, you, you can't put a limit to time. Time just goes on. It, it just, well, you know what? Um, what about a day? Well, a day is a season in time because you put a, a limit to it. There's a time, a duration. If I'm, if I'm going from uh, when we started the new year, <clears throat> And we started in uh, January. Well, this new year brings four seasons. We have the spring, summer, fall, and winter. And in each season, it brings transformation to the earth. Nothing stays the same. It changes. Now, seasons, what seasons are, seasons reference, like I said, a period of time in time. A season is a period of time in time. Let's take the time for January the 31st, January the 1st, rather, to December 31st. That's, a, that's really a season. A year is actually a season. 365 days, there's, see, there's a beginning time and end time. Whenever there's a begin time and end time, that's a season. When we just say time without any type of restriction, now we're talking about time which is endless. It goes on and on and on. But what God has given us, he's given us time. And in all this, this infinite time, there's periods or seasons. We call them years or decades or centuries. Those are actual seasons. Now, so seasons refer to a period of time, whereas time is endless. Seasons are not. Seasons operate within a measure of time. Now, it might sound confusing, but just stay with me. If, I'm, if, if we're looking for uh, um, summer, you've you got summer months. And those months begin, what is it, June? And what ends around August? Okay, so from June to August, that's called summer. That's a season. Now, after that, that one season ends, another season begins. So let's look at this in the, in, uh, uh, in the Scripture and see what it says. Let's go to, stay with me here. Okay, Ecclesiastes 1, let's start reading there, and I'm going to read all the way to verse 8. Kind of set a foundation here. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time. Now, when you see these words time, I want you to don't say time, say season. Because season will give you a better understanding of what he's saying. And then I'm going to show you why it's in pairs. Watch what he says. A time to be born, a time to die. That's a season. Okay? So, a time, instead of time, we're going to say what? Season. Okay. A season to be born, a season to die. A season to plant. Makes sense. A season to uproot, a, a season to kill, and a season to heal. A season to tear down, and a season to build. A season to weep, and a season to laugh. You See, you're not weeping all the time. The end of a, when we talk about a, a, a season, the end of mourning, the season for mourning, the end of mourning is joy. It's the total opposite. It's, trans, it's transform, to transform. When you transform something, transformation means t a complete change. We're going to go back to that. It's a complete change. So he says, a time to mourn or a season to mourn, a season to dance. You're not always dancing. <laughs> a season to scatter stones and a season to gather them. A season to embrace and a season to refrain from embracing. A season to search and a season to give up. 
a season to keep and a season to throw away, a season to tear, uh, to tear, uh, to tear and a season to mend, a season to be silent and a season to speak. Some people haven't conquered that one yet. They stay in. They didn't get the silent part. Okay. A, a, a season to be silent and a season to speak. They just want to speak, 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 speak. Okay. A season to love and a season to hate. You see all those pairs are in twos. A season, to, uh, a season for war and a season for peace. So what it's saying is this. It's saying that whatever state you're in, the, you, the total opposite will be the fulfillment of that season providing you do what is right. So if you're mourning now, know this, that weeping may endure for a night, but what? There's a, joy is a transformation of mourning. And God wants to transform any situation you're in. He'll transform that. That's why he says, be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. And transformation is not a transformation until it's total. Let's look at this. Mourning, joy, are they the same? No. No. Weeping, laughter, are they the same? They're the total opposite. That's what you call transformation. It's the total opposite. So when we say a time and season for transformation, it means it's time for total change, not just a little change. And what I found, my wife and I, after ministry so many years, we found that the, the most difficult task of ministry is get people to do what's right now. Do what's right, right now. Because if you do what's right, right now, no matter what situation you're in, now that situation is, will change. It will completely change before God is through with you. It will be a total transformation. You shouldn't look like, talk like, act like the person you used to be. Somebody always said, ooh, there's a change in you. But if they're inviting you to do the same thing that you used to do because they don't see no change, that's because there's not no change. And we try to deceive ourselves and think, well, you know, I'm, I'm really doing good now. The Bible never told you just to do good. Doing good is good. But we accept small, minute changes and think that that's going to help you down the line. It's not going to help you. Your morning, will, you'll still be mourning, and you're, you're extending your season of mourning. Because it says, weeping may endure for the night. Night is a season. And that's where the weeping takes place. But you shouldn't be still weeping in the morning. Hello. He said, joy cometh in the morning. The joy is there in the morning, and you're still mourning. Not mourning, mourning. You're still weeping, and you're still having a problem. So, so the, the time that's mentioned here in Ecclesiastes, they are emotional seasons. seasons. This has to do with your emotion. This has to do with what every person on this earth will endure. You're going to endure. You're going to have birth and death. There's going to be planting, and there's going to be uprooting. There's going to be killing. There's going to be healing. There's going to be a time to build and a time to tear down, a, t- a time to build up, a time to tear down, a time to build up. You're going to have those. Though he's talking here about these are emotions. These are things in life that affect you, that affect me, and nobody is going to escape them. Well, I'm a Christian, and God's supposed to protect me from those things. No, he'll get you through them. Because they will come upon you. The evil day will come. And when it comes, you must be prepared to stand in the evil day. Why? Because I know joy comes in the morning. I can outlast. I can stand. So, no, so, so they flow in two. So we will experience these seasons in our lifetime. Your lifetime is a season. And in your lifetime, from the day you're born to the day you die, you're going to experience other seasons. 
Just like in the new year, in, the, in, in a year, there's seasons in the year. The year is a season because there's a time, you know, it starts, a time it ends. And then within this year, there are what we call four seasons. And in those four seasons, transformations take place. Listen to me carefully. Transformations take place in those seasons. So you ask yourself this. Since COVID, how much have you transformed? Are you still stuck? In 2020, February 2020, you still stuck in 2020. That's sad. Haven't changed. Oh, so you're online. Oh, I was on online church. But, but how have you grown? What has changed in your life? that will impact your relationship with your Heavenly Father. We think performing or performances works for God. No, they don't. God can, you know, your talents, gifts and talents, God is more concerned about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, okay? He's more concerned about the fruit than the gifts He gave you to minister. We focus on the gifts. Oh, I can play the piano. I can play an instrument. I can sing, you know. I'm good at speaking. All these things. No, no, that's not important to God. What's important to God is all you feel with the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Have you grown in your love and your joy and your peace? How are you? Are you still a shaky Jake? You're still flaky. Come on, you're still flaky. All you need some, <laughs> I should leave that alone, but all you need is some milk. <laughs> we can have us some cornflakes. You're flaky. What have changed? What can you look in your life and say, you know what? I've grown from this point. Because Why? Because what I used to do, I don't do anymore. That's transformation. You see, that's what transformation is. So now in each, se- um, in each season, it has appropriate time in the cycle of our lives. So, it, so when we talk about emotion, life contains a mixture of joy and sorrow, pleasure and pain, harmony and struggle, death and life. Everybody goes through that. I never in my, I never would imagine the pain that we had when, we, when my son passed. Never thought that that would ever happen. And I said, Lord, I got to make sure that that does not happen again. You know, and so I, I tell my kid, if you feel something, you're going to go get yourself checked out. I don't care what it costs. You're going to get checked out. I had a, a person telling me the other day, matter of fact, same with Pastor Dennis, just wasn't feeling good. He said, well, I better go get checked out. Thank God. Well, go get checked out. It's check, I mean, too many of us, too many of you doctors out there. <laughs> <laughs> You know, doctor, doctors, Dr. Maricela over there. Okay, Dr. Jackie over here. You know, Dr. Rocky over here. You see, we want to self-medicate. Don't know nothing about the anatomy. Don't know anything about this body. And we, we know it. Oh, I, know, I just need a little rest. See, that's your prescription. You're prescribing to yourself. And it's more than that. You just don't know. So don't sit here and start taking chances. Well, I'm going to believe God. God said, well, in about 20 minutes, you're going to be with me. (laughs) If you don't get to the hospital, you're going to be with me in 20 minutes. This has nothing to do with believing God. So in each life, we're going to have all these pain. They're going to come. Those are seasons. But we determine how long the season lasts. Because every season has an appointed time. Every season has an appointed time. And so if I'm angry with someone in my family, and I'm not forgiving them, I'm stuck in that season. Did you hear me? I'm stuck in that season. And the blessings that come from living a righteous lifestyle cannot come on me until I end that season. 
I have to usher in forgiveness. So there's, where there's unforgiveness, there need to be forgiveness. That's a cycle. See, that's a, that's a whole cycle that transform, transform, real transformation takes place when you move from, the, from one extreme to the far extreme of the other. Got to move. But here we are, inching, inching. Well, I, I, I'll try to forgive you. Just inching and still say, I forgive you. Boom. Start something new. Start something fresh. Start something better. But instead, we hold on to stuff in that season, and the other season cannot manifest. And when it don't manifest, you're going to be in pain. Let me, let me share something with you here. There was a, um, let me see where I have this um, statement. Oh, here's a story. Two friends were talking, and one said to the other, I want to ask you a serious question. My wife died three years ago, and I've been mourning her the whole time. For a long time, now he's talking about a season, for a long time, I thought I'd never love again. However, I just met someone new that I think I really like. Do you think it's too soon for me to move on? That's the question that was asked. Then the friend replied, absolutely not. There was a time, he says, absolutely not. The advice, the advice given was this. There was a time to mourn. And you know, sometimes people don't, have a, don't know how to stop mourning. So they're stuck. They're stuck in that season. They don't know how to get past it. And until you get past it, you will never experience the desires of your heart. He, say, he said to his friend, there's a time to mourn. And now it's time to love again. So the morning, when, it, when the love starts, the morning stops. Everything's in pairs. It's all in pairs. So, Pastor, I've been, I, Pastor, I've been broke for, tw- for 20 years. Well, have you, been see- have, you seen, have you been giving to the Lord? No, I had enough. All right, that's why you're stuck in that season. And you're going to stay stuck. You want to change something, then change it. You have to start doing the total opposite of holding on to. You got to do the total opposite. Let go of. That's the cycle for that season. You want to get out of mourning, then get over here into joy. There is a cycle, and it's important. So this friend says, mourning stopped, love began. That's a complete change. That's a complete transformation. Now, believers, <laughs> believers today, uh, slow growth, and, and there are some believers who grow really, really slow. Slow growth in the believer's life is a result of incomplete transformation. And this is what I learned about transformation. When something does not transform properly, it's deformed. It doesn't look like anything that it was intended to be. And in some cases where transformation don't take place, death is the result. It dies. And incomplete, when a, when a plant or, or a tree or whatever is incomplete, it cannot produce. So when we're talking about transformation, let's don't take this for granted. Let's don't think, oh, that's, that's just, uh-uh. If, you, if we don't work on us and take advantage of the season we're in now, now this is a season now, when this thing transforms, where are you going to be? You see, already before in 2020, people didn't make the adjustment. Here's where we are today. And s- some people, they can't get back to church. Because they're stuck. I think Dennis alluded to it. They're stuck in that season thinking that everything will be okay at home. Yes, and some of you that are listening online, yeah, you know, you shouldn't be sitting there with your cough and your pajamas, not when you are healthy and you can be in church. All you got to do is put on a mask. Well, Pastor, I don't know. 
You are too comfortable. And let me put it this way. If you can get up and go to work, then you can get up and go to church. We're starting to make excuses because we're stuck in that season. I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you now, hey, I'm, I'm just going to be all, all real with you. That thing was real comfortable being at home. I get up and, man, all I need to have is a top on, my pajamas, my flip-flops. I step up to the cameras and, well, praise God for another day and another opportunity. And as soon as that thing was over, click, man, I was gone. I didn't have to drive home. I didn't have to talk to nobody. I didn't have to see nobody. I didn't have to do no counseling. Praise Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Y'all was pretty much on your own. And that was deadly. <laughs> That's a deadly thought. <laughs> Praise God. But we got real comfortable. And they said, okay, we're going to go back to church. Pastor, when are we going to go back? And then my spirit said, oh, my God, I don't know if I want to go back. But then I heard the, I heard the, the bleating of the sheep. <laughs> Y'all complaining. I want to get back in. I want to touch somebody. Go, 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 go grocery shopping and touch somebody. <laughs> you ain't going to go to church to touch me. Because I want to see you. I see you. I see you in the spirit. <laughs> Amen. You, you saw me, but not bad. I just want to touch you, bad. I just want to say hi. And you know what? People got stuck. There's a fear now that people, churches, uh, uh, pastors, are so concerned about losing members because now the people's, the thing now is that there was already a 20 or 30 percent decline of church attendance before COVID. After COVID, we're looking at 50 to 70 percent decline in church attendance. Now, if, I'm, if, I'm, if you think that I'm trying to make you feel guilty online, I am. <laughs> get up off that couch and get your behind in church. Hey Amen. I mean, we got enough pews. We can sit you way in the back if you're scary. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's, the idea is that we can't forsake. Just because of things that happen, we can't forsake what the Bible has called us to do. But we must do it, okay? We, we must do things in, in a mannerism that doesn't cause death to anybody, that doesn't jeopardize your health. That's why we only have one service a week right now. One. Bible studies online, you ain't got to get out your house. You can go to Bible study. You got your life groups. You got any, all these different groups. You can go online. And, and it's called Zoom. Zooming in. Zoom. You know, the little boy used to say the commercial that car, zoom, zoom. Yeah, just, and we still have fellowship, but the key thing is that I wanted fellowship of the saints. This is something that with Julie and Donald, we couldn't have heard those words this morning if we weren't in fellowship. You see, the, the prayer this morning is just powerful. We would not have that inspiration. Why do we have inspirational service? Because we had inspirational prayer. Prayer sets the, the groundwork. Prayer set the foundation to build upon. And at 9.30, people, if you can, I would come out here just, just if, even if you don't say nothing, just sit in on the prayer because the anointing of the prayer would just get all over you. I don't know what to say. Just come sit. And then you, pretty soon you can find yourself saying, oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Ooh, hallelujah. Then you can start praying. You, you see, it's, it's like fire. Jeremiah says, like, fire is shut up in my bones. And it's, it, fire, you know, when it, when it ignites, it, it would, it, anything it come in contact with, it's going to light it up. It's going to light it up. Go, go with me to Psalms 30 and 5. I'm all off my lesson. <laughs> but it's, it's needed. Okay. Psalms 30 and 5. And don't worry, I have plenty more lessons coming on this subject. Okay. Watch Psalms 30 and 5. For his anger, talking about God, for his anger lasts for a moment. That's a season. See that word moment? That's a season. God is God not up in heaven, a madman. <laughs> Can you imagine God being a madman in heaven? 
We wouldn't, we wouldn't even exist. God is mad with me. No, he's not. He says, his anger lasts for a moment. Well, watch this. But his favor lasts the whole lifetime. You hear that? His favor lasts your whole lifetime. In other words, his favor never stops. But Satan is throwing little monkey riches in there trying to interrupt God's favor in your life. So something happens, a death happens, and there's mourning. But come on out that morning because his favor is still on your life. You may lose a job, and that's, that's a heartache and it's a hardship. But you come on out that hardship because God's favor endures for a whole lifetime. You see, that's going to get stuck with those things that are not heavenly. Don't get stuck on those non-heavenly things. Because what he's saying to you when he says weeping and mourning, and, and he's talking about killing, that's not heavenly. The total opposite of it is what God is trying to take you. So he says, weeping, I mean, sorry, his anger lasts for a moment, but his favor lasts for a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but joy comes. Now, moment is a season of time. Lifetime is a season of time. Night is a what? Season in time. Joy is a season in time. But now, this was written in the Old Testament, but when we talk about the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is not a season in time. It's etched in time. There's a difference there. He, he etched, we can have joy anytime we want. Why? Because, see, God is not limited to seasons. Everything that God does is timeless. So the earthly part is, if I go back to up here to Ecclesiastes, the earthly part is, let me, let me, oh, let me get on it real quick. I want to show, okay. Born. When we're, a baby is born, yay, look at it, it's so cute. You got all those expressions. But when somebody dies, you're crying. It should be the other way around. That baby born into this world of pain and suffering, oh, my God, what do we do? And then you leave this, they're leaving pain and suffering and agony. Oh, praise the Lord, because precious is the death of the saints. That's how God sees it. And the Bible says, and heaven rejoices when a saint comes home. So earth is mourning. See, we're in a flip-flop situation here. Earth is mourning when you leave to go to glory, and heaven is rejoicing. So which one do you think is real? Hmm. Now, I'm not saying when a baby is born, don't rejoice. But just know that, boy, that child just don't know yet what they have grabbing, grabbing hold to. And today... Today is so different than when I was coming up. I sometimes look at my granddaughter. I say, don't, don't you have some friends to get out to? They don't have to get out. They're all on social media. Kids used to come over to our house. We, they, I mean, they're over our house all the time. Matter of fact, they were over our house so much, I said, can we get a tax deduction, tax write-off? They're always over there eating. <laughs> I want to go to your house, Gary. I want to go to your house, Chris and Trey. They always want to be at the, at the house. But we, we, you know, we make things fun. I said, yeah, but don't you have a house to go to? <laughs> like a mom and dad? <laughs> Can I bill them <laughs> to something? Is there any type of recovery? I, we, that's the way we were. <clears throat> it was just we had, we go out and do things. Now... It's video game. I hear my, I hear my daughter sometime in her room. Get him! Get him! <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm saying, who is she? You know, she, now she's talking to the machines. Before, it was just my sons and, and, and my grandson. They were talking to the machines, but now I hear my daughter talking to machines. 
I'm, I'm just glad she didn't say, what? Like the machine answering back. <laughs> what? <laughs> Praise God. But we're in a different season. And if we don't, now we're looking at the season our young people are in. If we don't have some type of transformation into where we are, you're going to suffocate. You're going to stay stuck, and the things that you want to happen in your life will not happen. The things that God has prepared for you will not come to pass, simply because you're stuck. So what I'm saying to you today, it's like, if I get this, and I start making changes, make, doing what's necessary, then what I'm doing is I'm opening up and being ready for the next season. I can, if, if, I'm, if, 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 if I'm poor, and that's, I need to know that Jesus died so the poor don't have to be poor no more. And I get that in my spirit, and I start acting like somebody who has something. Just don't act poor. Our kids didn't know we were broke, because we didn't act like we were broke. Kool-Aid and popcorn was fun nights for them. We knew better, but they didn't. <laughs> Peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and jelly night. Woo! The kids, yeah. We're just saying, that's all we got. <laughs> but we never told them what we had or what we didn't have. They grew up thinking that they had everything. And, and my daughter, she says, Mom, Dad, you guys made it look so easy. Now they out there say, oh, it ain't that easy. <laughs> you made it look so easy. Because we worked at it. We did not accept that negativity. If we were in a season of negativity, we did not accept it. We know that this is where we are, but this is not where we're going to stay. And, and, and so we start preparing. We act like it. I mean, even sometimes we, we go out and buy some, some fake jewelry or, or fake uh, Louis Vuitton bags. Or... I know it's generic. I know it's fake. But I, I'm, I'm dressing for the real thing. I'm preparing for the real thing. Come on, people. You say, okay, we, we, we shopped at Goodwill. We shopped at any, any of these, these stores. But we knew what to look for. My wife, was, she liked to look for silk, silk blouses and Goodwill. She just fanned it through there. Oh, there's some silk. But if you didn't know what silk was, you'd pass it up. So we, we just didn't grab anything because we knew that God had prepared us for everything. Are you listening to me, saints? So there's a time and season, and this is a time. This is a season for transformation. Because where this world is going and the path this world is on, if you don't and I don't, those of you are watching online, if we're not prepared for this next season, you are going to struggle. Oh, let me finish up with this thought. Y'all got a minute, huh? You, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Do you all remember the, the, um, the story of the ant and grasshopper? Okay, I'm going to read this to you because it's, 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 it's important. One bright day, watch this, in late autumn, that's the season, a family of ants were, uh, blister, uh, was uh, uh, blistering about in the warm sunshine, drying out the grain they had stored up in the summer. That's a season. So what they, it's autumn, but the grain they acquired came from summer. From one season to the next season, Okay. It says, and, and when a starving grasshopper, his fiddle under his arm, came up and humbly begged for a bite to eat, and the ants, the ants go, what? Cried the ants in surprise. Haven't you stored up anything away for the winter? That's a season that has not yet arrived. So we see season past, season present, and season future. So here are the ants. <clears throat> taking care of their grain that they had harvested during the summer, which is late autumn, which means something is coming. All right? Winter is coming. So he said, look what? 
He said, haven't you stored up anything away for the winter? What in the world were you doing all last summer? I don't have nothing. He said, you don't have nothing. What you been doing? That's like some people say, I, I don't know. I have a problem believing. you kind of like, what you been doing? We got people that have been in this church for years and struggling. You got to ask yourself this question. What you been doing? Amen. Sometimes it ain't about, oh, poor baby. I just want to pray for you. No, you don't need prayer. You need to ask them, what you been doing? That you having such a problem. Come on, you got to help people. All right. <clears throat> now we go and look what he says. Okay, they say, well, what have you been doing? Now watch what he says. I didn't have time to store up any food, Queen the Grasshopper. I was so busy making music that before I knew it, the summer was gone. He was so busy doing other things that he didn't, but when he looked up, it was too late to do anything. And so many times, people, you're looking up, and it's too late to do something now. And hope, maybe you may make it through, maybe not. With the grasshopper, he, he, look what the ants said, and the ants shrugged their shoulders in disgust. They said, making music were you. He says, very well, now dance. <laughs> and they turned their backs on the grasshopper and went on with their work. Now, watch this. The summer, the season of summer for both the ant and the grasshopper provided time. That was the gift. We'll talk about this more next time. The time was the gift for storing food. The ants took advantage of it where the grasshopper did not. Winter was coming and no gathering could be done. Winter's season was one of pleasure for the ants, but one of death and destruction for the grasshopper. You see, the season's going to come. Time is not going to cease because of, you know, oh, I just wanted to stay summer a few more months. That ain't going to happen. Everything is going to change. Everything is going to continue to change. And when, when uh, the Bible tells us up in uh, uh, Genesis 8 and 2, while the earth remaineth, season, time, sea time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will not cease. But it says, while time remaineth. He's talking about earthly time. That's a season. So in the earthly time, we're going to have the seed time and the harvest and cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. It will not cease. These are physical seasons, physical seasons that will not cease because God said it so. Now, where are you in this season? Time to make a change. Time to do something with your life. Don't be like the grasshopper and fiddle your summer away because winter is coming. The Bible tells us that the evil day is coming. I don't care who you are, an evil day is going to show up on your doorstep. And what you do and how you are prepared for it is determined by what you do now. If you don't prepare now, it could be death or destruction. You could struggle, dip, have difficult challenges. And if you're having challenges now, say to yourself, I'm getting out of this season. This is not what God planned for me to be. And then know what the transformation process need to be, and then make that your decision. Praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a clap of praise. God is good. God is good. Father, we just want to thank you for each and every person assembled here. Thank you for those viewing online. Thank you, Lord, for giving us joy and giving us strength. Thank you, Lord, for helping us in this time of season. And we realize that it's our time to work. This is our lifetime. Our lifetime is our season. You planted us here for a time like this. There couldn't have been a better time for us to be planted in the earth than the time that we're in. This is the time that we're supposed to make the greatest impact of our lives. We give you praise, and I just want to give you thanks. I pray your spirit of the Lord rests upon each of these people that are assembled here today, those online. I pray that you bring increase into their life, and I pray that we open our heart to receive that increase in Jesus' name. 
I thank you, Lord, that we understand the principle and, and, and we understand the scripture as it relates to a time and season and transformation. That unless we transform, Lord, we can be dormant, we can even die. I give you praise and I give you thanks. No sickness, disease will dwell in our congregation. The devil is bound. All his works will come to naught simply because God is the God of all seasons. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. Today's live stream has been brought to you by the Rise Church of Oceanside. For further viewing of this message and other messages, please visit our website at www.therisechurch.org. Remember these words from John 8, 31, 32. If you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Until next time, the Lord bless you and keep you and give you peace.